I now give the floor to Ms. Valentine Rugwabiza. Mr. President of the Security Council, distinguished members of the Council, the African Union Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security, the representative and the head of Association Jeunesse en Marche pour le Développement en Centrafrique, Madam Executive Director of UN Women, Your Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Central African Abroad, uh, and the Francophonie uh, in the Central African Republic. Excellency, I would like to congratulate the UAE on assuming the presidency of the Council for the month of June. And I take this opportunity, uh, Mr. Chairman, to thank you for chairing this session. I'm honored to join you today to present the most recent report of the Secretary General on the Central African Republic and to update you on recent developments in the country. I will underscore the positive steps taken by the government to advance the peace process, as well as the concerning security and humanitarian situation at Central African borders with Sudan and Chad. First, the good news. Important progress was made in the implementation of the political agreement for peace and reconciliation in the Central African Republic and the joint roadmap for peace of the International Conference on the Great Lakes Region in an harmonized manner, including at the local level. On 24th of March, the Prime Minister convened the conference in which all Central African prefects participated to kickstart the decentralization of the implementation of the peace process, including by reactivating prefectural implementation mechanism. I'm also pleased to report that on 28th of April 2023, marked a significant development in the peace process with the dissolution of additional two armed groups, which are signatories of the political agreement and factions of three other signatory armed groups following active engagement by the Central African government with leaders of these armed groups. However, the residual combatants affiliated with the wings of these armed groups must be quickly disarmed and reintegrated for this dissolution to have a meaningful impact. I would like to take this opportunity to exhort the partners of the Central African Republic for additional support for the DDRR program as required for the effective reintegration of disarmed and demobilized armed elements. I'd also like to welcome the Peace Building Fund approval of $5 million to support the socioeconomic reintegration of ex combatants in Central Africa through a project that will be jointly implemented with, by UNDP, IOM, and UN Women. I further welcome the Peace Building Fund approval of an additional $3 million project last week in support of social cohesion between returnees and host communities which will be implemented by IOM and UNHCR. Distinguished members of the Council, on 30th of May, President, the President of Central Africa announced a referendum on a new constitution scheduled for the 30th of July with a campaign from the 15th to the 28th of July. Subsequently, the National Election Authority announced the temporary suspension of preparations for the local elections. Against this backdrop, I encourage the government to provide clarification on its new calendar and chronogram for local elections. The convening of local elections in the Central African Republic continue to represent a unique opportunity to help address the root causes of the conflict by advancing decentralization, encouraging citizen-centered governance and consolidating the extension of state authority. Local elections would also broaden political space, a priority of the political agreement. For local elections to have the required impact, they must be inclusive. I had therefore continued to encourage dialogue between the government and the leaders of opposition political parties. Mr. President, 
The reporting period also saw the extension of the state authority to some of the most remote parts of the Central African Republic. A key milestone was in the area of Samwanja, near the Sudan border, which has been under the control of armed groups for decades. Joint and integrated interventions by the National Defense and Internal Security Forces in coordination with the uniformed and civilian component of MINUSCA allowed the resumption of humanitarian and development support in the area, thereby bringing tangible peace dividends to the local population. Following the securing of the area and the re-establishment of the state authority, the Prime Minister of Central Africa and myself led a joint visit to Samwanja with a delegation composed of several ministers, United Nations country team agencies, bilateral and regional partners. During the visit, a number of transformative and people-centered projects were launched in the health, education, community violence reduction, as well as the launch of the UNDP stabilization program in Central Africa. The ongoing transformation in Samwanja shows that it is possible to break decade-long cycles of violence and conflict and reestablish state authority, even in regions which have known limited or no state presence. It requires, however, the coordinated and concomitant interventions of the Central African government, MINUSCA, humanitarian and development partners. While the humanitarian needs of the Central African Republic remain significant and pressing, it is also necessary to support the Central African government to rebuild social cohesion and invest in the resilience and recovery of local communities. The government mobilization of its partners, support of its partner support to build the institutional, logistical, and operational capa capabilities and capacities of the national defense and internal security forces also remains essential to sustain security gains. The security situation, however, remains concerning in some parts of the country. Increasing tensions and the rapidly deteriorating security at the Central African borders with Chad, Sudan, and South Sudan since April since April and, uh, and most of May, of course, represent renewed security and humanitarian challenges. These new threats have impacted the already complex security environment, requiring MINUSCA to maintain flexibility and mobility. In this context, MINUSCA requires sufficient and adequate aviation capabilities to maintain our preventive and robust posture. I also encourage the Central African government to take a holistic and coordinated approach to border management. I therefore welcome the recent approval by the Central African government of the national policy on management of border areas and urge the government and neighboring countries to continue addressing border management through the reactivation of their respective bilateral commissions. Explosive ordnance devices continue to pose a significant threat to civilians, peacekeepers, and to humanitarian actors. MINUSCA continues its support to mitigate this threat in order to create a conducive security environment and effective humanitarian delivery in the country. I would like to express appreciation to MINUSCA troops and police contributing countries we continue to serve even in the face of hostile action, as shown last week by the injury of two peacekeepers by hostile fire. Distinguished members of the Council, the humanitarian situation in the Central African Republic remains concerning. Following the outbreak of the conflict in Sudan, the country is facing an influx of refugees and returnees in urgent need of protection and assistance. I thank donors for their generous support to the 2023 Humanitarian Response Plan. However, the Humanitarian Response Plan is by June funded only by 28%. I appeal for further support, including to the revised 
humanitarian response plan to address the most urgent needs of people in distress. There is another unfolding humanitarian crisis at the border between Central Africa Republic and Chad. Since May, tens of thousands of people, mostly women and children, have crossed the border from Chad into the Central African Republic, fleeing violence in the neighboring Chadian province of Logon Oriental. On 8th of June, the Prime Minister and myself visited Power and went up to the nearby area of Bedaka, which is two kilometers from the border with Chad, in the Limpende Prefecture, to assess the humanitarian and security situations. The visit highlighted the acute humanitarian needs in Bedaka and was an opportunity to provide an immediate and urgent humanitarian response, but also to mobilize support for both the displaced Chadians and the host communities. The joint commitment by the Central African government, MINUSCA, and humanitarian partners to provide a strong and coordinated humanitarian response reassured local authorities reassured also host communities and the displaced Chadians. The prevailing economic condition and situation in the country remains concerning. Commodity prices continue to rise, even doubling or tripling in areas that were dependent on imports from Sudan. In this context, we welcome the approval of the IMF Extended Credit Facility Arrangement and the president declared priorities which will help the Central African Republic avoid default and provide services for its people. We encourage the government to implement the necessary reforms for improved collection of internal resources and enhance transparency and controls in budget management to enable a resumption of direct budgetary support by international partners. Mr. President, human rights violations remain a concern in the Central African Republic. The mission continues to work with and encourage the government to initiate independent and transparent investigation into human rights violations and abuses, as well as breaches of international humanitarian law by all parties to the conflict. The national authorities must be encouraged to continue to advance these investigations and finalize the pending cases for future trials. On a positive note, the conviction of five individuals for the murder of a Burundian peacekeeper in Grimari in March 2020 is a welcome development in the accountability for crimes committed against peacekeepers. Mr. President, on 8th of June, the United Nations decided to repatriate a unit of 60 military personnel and their commander from MINUSCA over serious allegations of sexual exploitation and abuse by some members of the unit. These allegations were reported by one of our local prevention and response network partners. Local networks are a key pillar of MINUSCA's strategy for the prevention and response to sexual exploitation and abuse. The mission took immediate action to strictly apply the Secretary, the Secretary General zero tolerance policy for all allegations of sexual exploitation and abuse. MINUSCA will spare no effort to prevent new cases and ensure that all uniformed and civilian personnel honor the Secretary General's zero tolerance policy, including by enhancing preventive and response measures. I would also call on troop and police contributing countries to continue to enhance their role in ensuring zero tolerance for sexual exploitation and abuse. The mission will also work with these headquarters to explore specific prevention and monitoring measures for at-risk contingents. Lastly, I welcome the continued constructive cooperation between the government and MINUSCA. MINUSCA has and will continue to support the Central African Republic 
to create the political and security environment conducive to lasting peace, stability, and sustainable development, which can only be achieved through concerted efforts of all partners. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you very much, members of the Council, for your kind attention. I thank Ms. Rugwabiza for her briefing.